we are at farm number two or the main farm or what I'm always talking about is mom's farm. This is the original farm in the four generations. I would be the fourth generation. Mom lives here currently. So I put these raised beds in quite a few. Oh, it's probably been now two, three years ago. Loving them. She loves them. So we are going to talk about fall planting today. What? Yeah, you can actually plant a fall garden, you guys. So maybe spring didn't go well, maybe you didn't get your stuff in on time, or maybe you're crazy like me and just want to harvest in a year. That's what we're gonna talk about today. So we still have a lot of time. I'm in growing zone five, and you can do this all from a lot of different growing zones. So how do you know if you can still plant things? Well, the biggest thing is to know what you're gonna plant. So I'm gonna talk about beets, and you wanna just look on the packets or where you're ordering them from, and look what it says for days to maturity. So beets are generally around that 55 day range. So you wanna count backwards, for me, from my first frost date, which is usually I think October 15, somewhere in there, I should really look. And then count backwards and say, okay, when do I need to plant these in order to make sure I get a harvest? I'm, a, I'm going a little early, but I wanna show you guys and I want you to garden with me. So this is really easy. Why I love raised beds is look, I already had one crop of beet, not beets, what was here? I'm trying to, oh, kohlrabi was here. I have some old beets that I'm still canning and working on there. But look how good the soil is. Even after it's been used, it is still beautiful and worked up. It's because I put compost on it every year, a beautiful layer of compost. And it makes it so workable because I'm never walking on it, trompsing on it, I don't ever till it, but it is just so good. So I like to just make these troughs for right now by hand. Mom usually gets out a ruler. I'm not joking. She is so picky on her straight lines. But since I'm doing this, I'm just going to do it by my hand because with raised beds, you can kind of use a general rule of your sides and use them. And then you just want to, again, look on the back of your seed packets and that's going to tell you the spacing. So with beets, with carrots, with anything that's kind of a root vegetable, notice how I said root correct. I know a lot of times you guys notice I say root. I can do that. I can be hick. So right now, these are going to be the Chicoga. I love these ones. They're the white and red striped, and they actually have a beautiful light kind of sweet flavor. So these seeds are really weird. They're kind of big, kind of gnarly. Look at those. And you know, on the packet, I think it will tell you like two to four inches apart. You could totally do that and just put one every so often. Or you could do what I do, and I just kind of start sprinkling it in very sporadically. Now, if I notice that a whole bunch of them are really close together, I will spread them out. But the thing is, when you're doing it this way, in a few weeks, once they actually sprout, which it takes about two weeks usually for these to sprout at most, you can come in and then just pluck out and thin out ones that are too close together. Or if you're like mom and I, you don't always get them thinned out and that's just fine. Do you know why? Because then as they get big enough that you can start eating them, even if they're kind of smaller like babies, you can just pull them out and eat them at a small size. That doesn't matter. So once we get all these in here, I'm just gonna keep going along that row and see every so often I just kind of push them apart. And I'm just going about a quarter of an inch into the ground. We're really warm right now, obviously. This is Iowa. So they're gonna sprout really quickly. I always make sure, I should say I don't always make sure, but this time I'm doing it correct. I'm labeling them. Just, you know, sometimes, especially if you're doing something that's a different variety than you've done, you can check what you liked and what you didn't like. So I'm gently putting that over. I'm gonna pat it down ever so slightly. You don't wanna do it too hard. Keep going here. And then once I get all this done, I'm gonna water it. So let me keep going, get a few more rows done. I bet you wanna see first what I'm gonna plant. Let me show you the different types I'm gonna plant because I do love all these. So Golden Boy, or Golden, is one of my favorites. This is gonna be obviously a yellow color. It is very light flavored. So if you think, I don't like beets, they taste like dirt, Golden is your one to go to. If you want a very classic, very classic dark red beet, I usually always did Detroit dark red, but I also like this Ruby Queen. These are what I often pickle because they're such a nice deep red color. They say that color is actually really good for your blood and your um, cardiovascular system. It purifies the blood. I'm gonna believe it because they're good. Any of these are really good roasted. I already talked about Chicoga. Just nice, light, sweet. This one and the Golden, I both like raw and I like them thinly sliced in salads. And then I do some albino because it's all white. So again, it's a really sweet flavor. It's delicious. So I'm gonna keep planting some and then we'll water them and soon we'll have beets. 
Okay, so I have all my beets planted. I have a few rows. I did two rows of each variety. That's just because that's what I wanted. In the fall, honestly, I do most of this for canning, I mean, for eating and not for canning. You've seen a lot of my canning videos. Those I do more during the spring harvest, the summer harvest. So I'm gently just putting all the soil over of the ones that I just did. You can see I kind of gently tap it on top and then just press it in ever so slightly. We have a few more here to do. I do, I obviously love beets, as you know. And I think the thing is with vegetables, you need to give them a chance, especially if, like if you're thinking of those awful canned ones maybe you had at school or somewhere, but no, we're not talking mass produced canned here, people. We are talking good homegrown vegetables with tons of nutrients, tons of flavor packed into them. So you need to water them then. A new seedling, what does it need? It needs warmth, good soil, and water. So I'm gently watering them with a shower head because if you do something like a hard stream of water, it will displace those seeds, push them all around. You don't wanna do that because then your rows are gonna get messed up. So we're just gonna gently water these. And then at this point you wanna think they need about an inch of water a week. So if you're not getting that in rain, you need to water them probably two times a week once they sprout because raised beds, even though they're great, they do dry out quicker, which is what you want, good drainage, so you need to water them. This is how easy it is to start your fall garden. This works for carrots. This works for beets, and soon this is gonna work for lettuce, spinach, arugula. You don't wanna do that usually till a little later because it's so tender, it doesn't need the heat, but these take longer to mature. Look at those maturity dates on the packet, count backwards from your frost date, start your fall garden, it's fun, I'm gonna keep watering, plant more garden, way more because I'm crazy. I hope you join me, share this around, tell everyone what it is, tell everyone they can garden. And yeah, you'll be seeing more of me because I can't stop.